Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey and Baseball Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a 54-year-old from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I don't think his hockey journey has taken him many places, but his baseball journey has led him to my new honey hole, Concarden, Ontario, Canada. He is raising the puppies right and giving coaching everything he's got. And the proof is in the pudding. Seems he's been running amok for years and bringing teams and kids together to win because it's fun. I watched firsthand as him and his Cardinals got better every game and steamrolled Ontario, collecting three trophies en route to the All-Ontario Championship. And fun fact, King Cardin is also All-Ontario Champions in hockey. Winning is fun. Welcome to the shed, Steve Trevally. <laughs> or Valley, gosh. Thanks, Wally. Yeah. Um, nice, nice for you to come. I was pretty persistent on getting you in here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I get into how we know each other. Um, while well, you were coaching my son in baseball and I was just a parent guy and, uh, stayed out of the way. And then we didn't really get to know each other until like the very end. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I just stayed out of the way. It was a parent, you know, <laughs> uh, but you did a great job with those kids and, uh, you know, it was Colby's second year of baseball, and uh, well, now he thinks he's a baseball guy too. You know, <laughs> he is. <laughs> he definitely uh, is. Yeah. So you told me that your uh, family had a checklist of words you might uh, repeat on here. What are they? Oh, winner learn, and you know, just <laughs> the kids did it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the kids did it. That's coaching, right? We don't do it. We're just standing no. there watching. You got her. Um, but they did go out there and do it for you, didn't they? I sure did. Time and time again. Um, that was a hell of a squad you guys had. You had a lot of athletes, you could say. We did. We said we were going picking that team in uh last fall and then in the winter, and when we got indoors at the arena, I told them the first three weeks there, I said, guys, this is a special group of kids. You guys are gonna do special things this year, and I think they believe that and they sure did. Um, and so you guys won all Ontario, but I was new to this baseball thing. You guys chose to move up um, a division and play harder competition and then still beat everybody, right? <laughs> Ryan wanted to Ryan wanted to move up. He actually talked about going to A, but it was three levels up because after winning uh, the two A tournaments, Ryan thought we could, but we didn't really want to go to the GTA on the long weekend. So we settled at B and... Thank you. <laughs> I try then... to stay out of the GTA myself. <laughs> uh but that was a fun weekend and uh the game i remember the most was well for people that don't know the hockey folks listening um it's double elimination right so if you lose two games you're out of the tournament yeah. and you guys never did lose one but uh it was sunday the first game and you guys were down seven nothing and i'm thinking whoa if we're gonna win this thing this is gonna be a long day now <laughs> yeah <laughs> what but, a baseball uh, game that was it was uh it was an interesting game. I, those every game that uh, well, those both those games where we won by one were close and kind of nail biters. But uh, there's something about that group like they never got too high, too low. Nothing seemed to phase them. And Ryan and uh, Quiller were really good about keeping the kids motivated if the other bench was getting loud. Right. And uh, I just, it just, it just, I always said to Ryan like, it's a this group's special. They just seem to just roll the punches like down five, down seven, down eight. They just chip away, and we just kept saying, hey, win the inning one inning at a time and they they went on and did it so it was pretty cool i watching as a fan this year it was very uh i guess almost professional like like business like they were all very business like when they were at baseball yeah i mean i'm not a serious guy but i want the kids to have fun and play loose but uh well, i guess when the game's on it's compete mode and they just get after it and they do. our job as coaches if, if they start to take it too seriously just remind them hey it's a game we can't control the outcome all you can control is uh well, as you know, the two words, attitude and effort, and just keep just keep playing. Yeah, and um, like you guys had everybody bought in, you know, to what their roles were, what they did for the team. Everybody had a, a spot on the team, right? Oh, yeah. It takes everybody, and we try to tell kids stories about the teams in the past that have had success that it don't matter where you hit in the lineup or if you play seven innings or three innings in the weekend or every game, that you're going to need to come in and contribute when your time's uh, your time's up, come in and do a job. And we saw that with some guys that, you know, we the weekend wouldn't have ended the way it did without every single guy doing something at some point. So they all played a big part of that. And they all 
Well, that's how you win in any sport. Yeah. The same in hockey. You need everybody playing the right way. For sure. For each other. That's what a lot of my speeches. I mean, we just had our first tournament of the year with my new team. And um, I know you saw we won our tournament, but um, it was like as fun as it got. Um, when you see teams come together as coaches, I know we've talked about it in the past. Um, having a new team and um, only three returning players from last year. And then see the way these boys came together over a weekend and um, found ways to win in tight games, found a way to win in the last game. And then I said that they could shave my head if they won the first two games the round robin, just because I thought it would bring the boys together. I know it was an aggressive start to the year, but um, I thought that would help. And um, then we won the first two games. I bring out the Clippers and um, I had two players that offered that they wanted to cut their hair too and be a part of it with me. And I'm like, well, that's cool. And then it only takes a few to get a party started. Next thing I know, all the boys are getting haircuts from each other. They're all taking turns. They're all working together and they were all the tightest family. And then we wanted, I, then my speech was, well, guys, we had fun. We got bad haircuts, but just letting you know, if you're walking around a hockey rink with haircuts like this, you have to win now. <laughs> Yeah, really. I was following you guys all line, uh, all weekend, so I thought it was pretty cool and excited uh, was, to see you guys have success right off the bat. So yeah, it was cool. And then all those kids went to school with their awesome haircuts, <laughs> and I told them I would go to work like that. So then I went to work, put a little product in to make it look as good as I could. And then the CEO comes in for a meeting with me. <laughs> I got that haircut, and we had a good laugh. <laughs> Well, it's a great way to start. I love the idea. I thought, well, you're all automatically right off the bat trying to build a team, and that was pretty cool. And that is why I tried to book the hotel tournament right off the hop. I mean, we had we hadn't even played a, a, a game. We had played one exhibition game, and we had a couple practices, and then um, I just wanted to get the boys in a hotel with a pool, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That's where it happens, right? It is where it happens, yeah. Um, it was like my daughter's first year of hockey when I coached U9 Gals House League. Um she was into it, I you know, but until that hotel tournament with the water slide and the pool, um, that's when I think those girls really understood what hockey is all about. It's not just yeah. about playing the game. That's right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but uh, so you're not with the U13s next year, eh? You're moving on. Moving on. Yep. Yeah. Moving up with a bunch of them, though. Yeah. Half of those guys. Well, all those uh, all those 2011s are on the team again. And uh we're happy to have that group back together with the 2010s. And we added a few new kids from out of town. So just excited. Another nice group of kids and some good ball players. And just I'm ready to get started now. So I think I told you that a week ago. It's going to be a long wait till April. So Well, I understand. Um, I had to wait all through baseball season to get going. <laughs> but I found it interesting how they like Jeepers. They they roll right into each other. There is no break when you are a hockey and baseball parent. They just no. roll right into the next. Yeah, that's a, I was just mentioning that with a parent in town the other day that the times have changed. There used to be a bit of a breathing period there for the kids, but it's definitely power skating and whatnot. Was oh, sorry, you're talking about the kids? I was talking about the parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it is interesting. I found it interesting, though, that they also made them play rep and house league um, baseball uh, around here because for me, just thinking out loud, I try to build teams where you're on a team. That's your team. Those are your guys. And then they make them play on two teams. They can't show up for everything for both teams. And then that's not really a team to me. And I found it interesting because, you know, I was new to baseball. And then when you had to do both, I had baseball every night. Yeah, you would. With, you were in Ripley and back yeah. up to the garden. And yeah, that's a lot for the parents. Mm -hmm. I know it's a big commitment and, uh, there might be some changes in that down the road. There's definitely pros and cons. I, I do encourage kids to, to play both. I think there's value in it, but uh, I know it can be tricky and, and tough go for the parents. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I found it interesting, but uh, anywho, um, you know, who I want to bring up is um, Quinn Caesar. Um, I watched that the first time I showed up at the baseball diamond to watch he just walked out onto the field. I'm like, who the hell is that guy? And then I saw him run and then I saw him hit a ball and then I saw him throw a ball. And um, I was like, I want to see that kid play hockey. And then I find out he's the triple A goalie. Um, but then I 
heard how good he is at hockey. And I'm like, well, it makes a lot of sense watching him play baseball. I don't need to see him play hockey. I can already tell what he's like. But then I watched him as a teammate all year and as a leader on your team and cultures win championships. And he had everybody's back. He was vocal on the bench. He was cheering everybody on. Um, He was taking the first years under his wing. And then the coolest part for me that really stuck out was in the all Ontario final tournament, um, he won player of the game and then gave it to his teammate. Yeah, that's something I didn't even know about till after. And I was like, not surprised knowing the kid he is. First of all, those words you're talking about him, that means a lot, obviously coming from a person who's played high level sports, but that's uh, that's the type of kid he is from day one. He's a big athletic kid, but I thought that's the most important thing he brought to this team was number one, he's going to be a great teammate. He's going to be a guy that has everyone's back. He's going to stick with guys, build them up. And you summed him up perfectly. And to me, like, you can't win without guys like that. Not putting a skill side aside, that's his biggest asset is who he is as a person. So, Well, I, I, I always say, like, if your best players are, like, the best people too, it rubs off on everybody else. And when your best player is giving away his player of the game to another player, that shit rolls downhill. <laughs> yep. yep. Tells you a lot about that type of person he is, so. Yeah, so I still really want to see him play goalie, but uh, pretty sure I already know what I, I'll see when I go to watch. But um, what's cool for me, and I know you have these moments too, you sent me uh, what a fella sent you a message. Um, the messages you get from the kids you coach can really, uh, man, they can punch you right in the heart. But um, I guess Quinn will be playing on the same AAA team as my two horses from last year, episode 363, Jacob and Sam. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll be going to support them and watch them play. So then I'll get to see Quinn play. Yeah. Right on small world <laughs> that's awesome yeah i'm gonna hope, try and see him and ricky play as well so right and ricky's the other goalie and man what a bat catcher he is oh yeah rick he's uh he's one of our guys too there so he oh brings yeah a lot to the table yeah man you had some athletes um that guy could really chuck a ball to second base <laughs> yeah yeah he's quite a kid yeah um so let's see here how did you get into coaching baseball well my little guys were five six years old and just started picking a ball up and I didn't know anything about baseball it wasn't something I played as a kid so we signed him up in town and kind of got going from there and the guys who were running the show at the time were nice enough to bring me on board and teach me the game and let me be involved and that's how it started and how many years have you been into this now oh this will be over 15 now yeah it can really uh bite Jay the coaching thing oh geez I don't know what I'd do without it so be I lost understand. Without it. I understand. Yeah. Um, I guess I know you're similar to me now that I'm right back into this and it was the kids that have got me right back into the hockey world um, and doing this, but um, it was the kids that have brought back my passion and love for the game. Uh, It was a tough go when I moved back here for a while when I didn't have a team and now I have a team again, you know? Well, that's one thing, like you say, we didn't get to know each other that much this season until the end. And I started following you on social media. I'm like, well, this guy loves his players and this means a lot to him and the way you, you it's always about the players and the kids and how important they are to you. And I could see uh, the effect that coaching has on you. I was like, this is a guy who loves it as much as I do. <laughs> uh, I guess the feedback from parents to people around town after the tournament, these new parents that didn't know me is um, I'm the biggest kid on the team. <laughs> well, I've seen a few videos of you belly flopping in the pool. So I believe it. Man, I got high this time. I think that was uh, when when you have a whole team chanting Wally of under 13 boys and all the siblings chanting Wally, um, it can really get you a little juice in your step. I got high. <laughs> I went high and far this time. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love it. It's my thing. Um, hotel tournaments are belly flops. Every age group. <laughs> fun is fun, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, other ways we know each other though is well before we really knew each other and I was just a parent and you wouldn't have even recognized me um, I was cruising down by our cottage and you walk, you walked right by me and gave me a wave and didn't recognize me and I was like ah he'll get to know me eventually but you're not far from my neck of the woods here eh yeah is it uh, well I know it's, is it your side of the family has a cottage down Bruce Beach right yeah that's right yeah so you're down in that area what a spot eh Oh, great spot. Well, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but uh, I actually first heard about you. I was at a Ripley Bulls game a few years back and standing up at the top by myself. And uh, you had made some type of move or play. And I said to the gentleman beside me, he was probably maybe my age or a bit older. And I said, oh, wow, who's that guy? 
And the, the fella said, oh, that's my son. <laughs> I said, holy, <laughs> bro, this guy can play. Yeah. Uh, other than I was really fat and out of shape and had one leg. <laughs> well, it was a heck of a move. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess um, I could do the odd thing, but it was a struggle for me by the end. <laughs> Well, uh, but uh, that is one thing I'm going to dive into is uh, their coach um, said he wanted to help get my, I guess, knowledge and learn from me, I guess is how we put it, um, and asked me to help him with practices this year with the Wolves. And I thought, what a great time to jump back in and help them out. Um, so Wednesday nights, I'll get to go help them with practices and then I can hopefully help help the team and then when hopefully they can win and then I can feel a part of that too, right? That's awesome another night out holy well it's a it's way more fun to be a part of it than not a part of it right i hear you because i've been going to watch the wolves games and i'm not a part of it and i just watch and i i would rather be invested for sure yeah are you coaching your daughter's team as well or no so um the i'm not the coach um kyle tout is a fantastic coach it's second year with the gals um so he had them after i did for the, this will be his second year and man he even belly flopped for me last year um he kept the belly flop going and then he booked the same uh hotel this year and he says the belly flop's coming back again so that's all great there and i asked him i said so if you picked a coaching staff um I'm going to be at practice tonight and I can come on the ice if you need help. And he said he would take my help anytime and that it'll be by committee. So I guess if I can be at the games and practices, then I'm a part of it. And I love it because I miss coaching those gals. We had a hell of a year in under nine. <laughs> That's great. You're going to be a part of it. Yeah. It's way more fun. <laughs> so you won't have a night off this winter, which is good anyway. Well, you got to stay busy. That's right. <laughs> um i guess like i love the coaching thing so like why wouldn't i do it if i love it right i hear you yeah i hear you um i guess it's really bit me because i was a couple of years ago making more time to do this than uh go to the rink every night yeah i can i don't know how you uh sat watch baseball all summer you must have been chomping at the bit to get back at the back of the rink <laughs> um it's a slower pace for me that's for sure <laughs> Um, I'm not used to sitting down and, um, I sat a lot this summer, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I guess it was about as relaxed as I get though, was at the ball game. Cause I yeah, had to were, just sit were, there. <laughs> you were a calm and quiet parent. You were out left field sitting out there quiet by yourself. And <laughs> it was very relaxing out there. You know, I can, I like the small talk before and after the games, but you know, then once I want to watch the game, I just want to sit there and watch it. You know, same yeah. when I watch hockey, if I'm not coaching, I don't go near the other parents. I go stand oh. by myself in the corner and watch, you know, right on. Yeah. Well, I respect uh, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get into it. But so during the games, what was your role? Cause you always had your clipboard and I know you had lots of stats going on. eh? Yeah. I, you know, it's a good question because I'm definitely not the brains behind any of the operations here. I've always been lucky enough to have great head coaches. And uh, obviously this year, Ryan Fraser, last year, Braden Novak, Greg Stepaniak, Warren Beisel, Jay Bell. And uh, they were always good enough to let me be on the bench and be part of the team because I didn't really have a lot of value as far as baseball knowledge. I never played as a kid. So as far as my role in the clipboard, it was, was keeping statistics, but it was also more about uh, just, you know, just keeping a sense of how the game's going and who we might need to bring in next or, and just uh, trying to be really just a moral support on the bench, to be honest. Well, um, I don't think you should undersell yourself so much to baseball knowledge because I've had hockey coaches that some of the best coaches I ever had never played hockey at a high level or anything. They knew how to bring the best out of people. And um, well, I guess one of the ways you got into the shed, um, you did send me a nice message about how I love my guys, which is true. Um, but um, Colby told me you're the nicest coach he's ever had. So I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dads are a different role, right? Yeah. Um, I'm coach guy with him, though, and I I am hard on him. <laughs> I was the same with my guys, so. Yeah, well, you can't make it easy on them, right? No, no you got to be tougher on your own kids, so. Absolutely, and they got to earn it just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, when you do know they have a lot, um, it's with any player, when you know what they could do, you want to see it every time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the job trying to bring that out of them, right? In the days that they're, they're feeling it or the days you're not, you're trying to bring out the best of them. And yeah. So some of the things you did this year that stood out to me were almost after every game well, after every game, you would email Colby like feedback from the game. Did you do that for every player? Yep. We did every, every I, game. 
I didn't do it as much uh, the, this year and last year as I did when they were mosquito age. I just wasn't sure if the kids were reading them or receptive or, but I still tried to do it as often as I could. I just think it was important that they knew, you know, win or lose, you're going to hear from, from me and talk about what I thought you did well. There's always something positive and what our next steps were. And then they have something to think about before yeah. the next time they show up. Right. For sure. But yeah, I, there was a lot of times I'm like, Colby, you got to see this message from your coach. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm happy that you got your – I always wonder if the parents actually show the kids, so it's good to know at least some people did. That's good. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're going to take the time and effort to do that, you would think the kids would get to see it, right? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I haven't got into doing that for my players yet, but I do uh, – I guess I try to do the same thing in person. Um, I found as a hockey player, you didn't hear enough nice things about how you played, especially when I was coming up you heard about the negative and what you weren't good enough and mm. how you weren't good enough and how you didn't do this or didn't do that. I like to tell them what they did do, you know? Well, I, something that you just said there resonates with me because when you tell them what they did do, it reinforces that they're going to do it again. And like our job as coaches isn't to be fault finders. Like we obviously we're going to give feedback to improve, but we're always looking for the, the negative and wrong. You're not going to get, get them doing all those things you want them to do. So, mm -hmm. Um, so your poster picks also stood out to me, which, uh, Lee Freeman in the UK will whip that up for us, but, uh, he's made a lot of posters for me all voluntarily. What a guy <laughs> takes everybody to win. <laughs> but what I loved about your poster picks were it was all team pictures. Basically it was all the teams together and, uh, that's what it's all about. Right. Yep. No one wants to see a picture of me, and really, there I don't have any of myself. The only times I would have them was usually myself with a player, and the parents took those. So, um, well, I, well, the other thing I appreciated too was uh, a couple of your uh, the ones that weren't as a full team were like the five or six kids, um, all having fun on a day in the summer, and that was you voluntarily going and doing more, whether it's batting practice, pitching. You'd have guests come in and help them. And, um, I mean, you put in a lot of extra effort that I don't think the other teams would have been doing, right? And then you beat everybody. Well, we did have – it did end up paying off in the end. I, I read somewhere once, you know, you, you know, you got to try to work harder uh, than every other team. And then, you know, I think it was John Wooden said, it's just about trying to outwork yourself every time and get better. And providing those AM uh, activities with the boys is just kind of keep it light, have fun. But they're around each other. And like you said earlier, it's all about building team. And and so if we're if it's a, if it's a wacky sock day and we're gonna hit BP and have pizza after, if it gets those boys closer, then it's that's what it's about, right? And it's it's not just for this year. It's hopefully you know these guys are gonna be friends for a long time. So yeah, um, someone the other day asked me what I did for my 40th birthday uh, when they found out I was 40 now, and then I was trying to think, and I was like, oh, we had practice that night, and I, I so Cabina Fest is a thing in Germany where after a practice you uh sit in the locker room as a team and then two guys on the team ro rotate who it is but they feed the whole team a meal and bring in a couple of cases of beer back in the day <laughs> but anywho it was a team day and we would do it like oh whenever we ca could on a tuesday and then it brings the whole team together i brought cabina fest to concord last year for my 40th birthday i made them spetzli from germany with some bacon and cheese in it and uh, i got off the ice earlier from practice i had it all ready and then i just had to heat it up on the stuff in the locker room and then i brought all the boys over and we we had cabina fest in concord i thought it was hilarious oh, wow. that's awesome <laughs> it, was a, it. it was a memorable 40th birthday you know that's great yeah. And those are the days I remember from last season, right? You can have the normal practice every day, but when you make them wear funny socks and you do something different, it makes it more memorable, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to remember. That stuff, that, like that dinner you provided and you doing belly flops and cutting the hair. <laughs> but I don't know if they'll remember the, the scores or even the wins, but uh, that stuff's the stuff that resonates, right? So, well, and now these kids that have played for me before, I've been getting each team their uh, two L's and hockey tails shirts with names and numbers on the back. And now these punks are telling me I got to get them hoodies. I'm like, you guys know I have to pay for this shit. <laughs> but come on, coach. <laughs> yeah, I'll get them. I'll get you something. I just got to figure out how to make money. <laughs> I'm having too much fun to try and make money out here, you know? <laughs> um. So, anywho, um, let's see. Um, how did you end up in Concord? Well, to make a long story super short, uh, my wife's family moved up here. Uh, her parents were in their fifties. They sold, they ran a butcher shop in Hamilton for years. They wanted to get out of the city and they, 
found this place up on Bruce Beach. I don't know if you were here when Rocky's Meats was there. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe not. Or I'm not, not sure. sure. Yeah, I've been, okay. I've been, so he, he I've been coming Rocky. here for a lifetime. Yeah. Oh, so you probably were in there. Well, Rocky was my father-in-law. Really? And uh, we would come up in the summers, my wife and I, because we were known each other since we were five, six years old. And uh, we got married and I said, let's get out of the city. It's just too crazy. We want to get out of there. So we came up and I asked her parents, could we stay with them until I found a job and been here ever since. So you were staying at Rocky Meats? I did stay there for a year. Yep. Um, that's, I would walk up the hill from the cottage and that was like the candy store yeah, when I was a kid. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Small world, eh? Mm. <laughs> um, so what, how old were you when you moved here? Cause I understand getting out of the city to get here because once you've lived this pace and around here, my word, it would be tough to go back to the city. Yeah. I was about 20, uh, 27, 28. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And, uh, What's the day job? What's the day job been around? Well, now it's retired. I retired last July. So yeah, whatever. Live your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sucks when you don't start work until you're in your thirties, man. <laughs> it's a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Well, uh, the other part I appreciate about this season and I'll, I guess I'll talk about Colby is he was, he'd played one year of house league baseball. All those other kids had played years of baseball. And then um, you guys did take him. And uh, to start the season, I mean, he was a bubble player. And I was looking out on the field knowing who was out there. And I'm like, yeah, this is a tough lineup to crack. And um, being honest, like he struggled with it at the start because, you know, he's never been that guy that has to sit on the bench all the time. And then the first tournament, he didn't play much. And he was having a tough go with it until you guys won the tournament and winning's fun. And then that kind of changed his attitude a bit. And then the next tournament, he wasn't playing much again, still having a tough go. But I kept telling him, I'm like, you just, once you get your chance, you just got to show what you can do. And um, then he did get his chance to pitch in a blowout. And then I think he struck out the side. And then all of a sudden he had shown what he could do. And then all of a sudden he got to pitch for you guys. And then he became a regular in the lineup. And it warmed my heart as a dad that he didn't quit, didn't give up. Because it was like when I went to the AHL as a hockey player and I'd always been the guy wherever I was, I go to the AHL and I'm playing on the fourth line with the fighter. And when I would get my opportunity to go out there, I didn't play well. I didn't believe in myself because I wasn't used to playing like that. It let me get to me mentally. And then when you're not in it mentally and you're not feeling it yourself, you can't do it when you get out there, you know? Well, I, I can tell you, I use Colby's example uh, many times in the last few weeks when I'm at the tryouts for the younger kids and I've said it more than once Colby came out in the fall and then we had picked our maybe our core group and offered those other guys a number of kids to train all winter and uh, we were narrowing it down and I said to Ryan I really want to see a couple of these guys outside and Colby was one and I know uh, you you guys were kind of uh, not being through this process and I know it's a difficult process we're telling kids hey you got to come all winter and we're going to wait to the spring to make a decision and but and I said to Ryan Colby keeps coming back and we got into that gym and, uh, or sorry, the arena and Colby was sliding on the concrete and diving on the concrete. And I was like, okay, that's uh this kid is, we, we're not losing this guy because he just brought a level of compete and toughness. You don't see a lot today. <laughs> and then, uh, what you mentioned about just, uh, you know, fighting through and earning his time. Um, he was receptive to coaching. And then I said to Ryan, like this kid competes no matter what he's at, he competes at the plate. He wants a hit. As a pitcher, he's in there. He's just staying composed. And uh, and then the outfield, once he started laying out, it was like, this kid wants the ball. He just – Kobe earned it. Like, he he definitely progressed throughout the season. And he's just a great example of not quitting, not feeling sorry for yourself, finding your role and keep busting your butt. And then look in that final uh, – that OBA weekend, like those games where it was a one-run game, I'm thinking in that – I'm pretty sure it was Tilsonburg where he made – or the – final where he made another great catch in the outfield and I, was, I just remember turning to the other side of the dugout and shaking my head like oh my gosh this guy is just like, <laughs> okay. incredible. Like, okay I don't say too many nice things about him I don't <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah he is a competitor there's no doubt every sport he plays it's like even playing mini hockey with him it's like when he was little, I almost like had to let him win because I didn't want to deal with, you know, him b being a little bitch about if he lost me um, because he is as competitive as they get. And um, I do remember the dive in the outfield. It was the game that you you guys had been down seven nothing and then came back 
took the lead like eight, seven. It was like bottom of seven. They had bases loaded. And, uh, and then he made the diving catch and the guy didn't get home from third. Cause he didn't right. think he was going to catch it. And then you guys ended up getting the next out and you won. And uh, that was pretty neat. Cause I was sitting out by myself in, the, in left field and that's where he made the catch. And I was like, Whoa, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, the, that was the one you're right. Yeah. You know, it's our funny though, because, uh, you know, like come going to those 13 year tryouts now in the fall that Matt had me out too. Like already you can see like, Oh, this guy is, uh, he's had a season under him. Like he's throwing the ball properly. He's, he's busting his body, setting set an example. And it's like, Oh, wow. These guys are going to have a him and Easton to look up to this season. So it was yep. just good. Like I said, guys, watch how Colby does this and that. So it was kind of neat. Well, and uh, it was the coaching he got though. I mean, he was just, he was not a baseball guy. And um, I mean, Ryan is a, a, quite the baseball guy. He uh, watching him coach, man, he is dialed right into her. Ryan uh, is up there with the top guys I've ever learned and being able to coach under as far as baseball knowledge. And, and so I said to Ryan all the time, Ryan, I'm learned a ton this year and I'm going to, try and take that with me next year and so he's been great i'm so happy he let me be a part of it and uh he never really said no to some of the things i wanted to do with the boys in the daytime and that and run those practices and yeah so thankful to have him the guys the kids who play for him if you're receptive to coaching you're going to get better i totally agree um you gotta have an open mind and uh do what the coach asks and you don't really have to always ask the reasoning behind it because the coach has his reasoning just do what he says right <laughs> yeah um, uh, but the part you were saying about taking away from Ryan and the other coaches you've had is that's exactly what I do. I take, try to take away all the coaches I've had good or bad, take away the little things from each one. But then now that I do this and I'm into coaching, um, I pretty, I try to get a lot of good coaches around the world on and then pick their brains. So then I learn shit. <laughs> It's been pretty fun. I've had NHL coaches on, NCAA coaches on, um, Euro European head coaches on, um, and it's been fun because everybody says something a little different to me that I that sticks out, you know. Well, the fact that you played high level hockey and you're pretty much saying that you're still open to learning and wanting to learn that speaks a lot. Well, it's the I think that's hockey. You learn from everybody. I mean, uh, the one thing I have noticed though is coaching under thirteen. Going through the season last year, I would notice kind of what we would have to work on as a team and then I'd come up with drills for that as we'd go and as I'd see it in games but now when I know what I think the issues can be in under 13 I'm like well why don't we just start working on that right away <laughs> you know so I feel like once you've done an age group before it, it's probably easier this second I hope it's yeah. it, it you know you can learn from your past that's I right mm -hmm. you can for sure yeah um, well, the other thing you did this season for the boys is you would get like uh, video messages from NCAA players and pro guys and all that, right? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, uh, well, we had Rob Butler from the Jays at the, in October when uh, that big message was, hey, here's the team, Rob, and I want you to, if you can, give us this message about being great teammates, because we talked about that earlier. You can't have any success without uh, the boys treating each other like brothers. And then Rob gave us a message at the end. We had uh, Jordan Beisel on. And we had uh, Dylan Kintz on and uh, hopefully their messages just, you know, send some to the boys. What's what matters, right? Like, and well, and that Beisel kid, I've seen him be the captain of the Bulldogs and I can tell what type of a guy and leader a guy is by how they play and act on the ice. And uh, that guy's a leader in hockey too. Yeah. He is. He, he, uh, we won in 2018 with him as the, for the most part, we don't really make t t captains in baseball, but the team leader and, I tell the young guys all the time, not only was JB maybe the best player I coached in that age group at the time, but he's always been the best teammate. And he treats every kid in that team like they matter. So if yeah. you're, you know, bottom of the order hitter, it doesn't matter if you're in the bottom order. To him, you're like a top of the order guy. And so when the game's on the line, if you're a nine, 10 hole spot or a 13th kid coming in on defense, you know, you're, he made you feel all season like you can do it. And so when you're there, you're going to perform. And he, that's just the type of guy he was like, kind of sounds like that Quinn Caesar was this year yeah a lot like that mm -hmm. um and you know what else was fun for me to see that team win was seeing Lane Bauman win because he had left to go triple a wasn't a part of our team last year but he was still connected with all his buddies and I knew it would have hurt him to miss it because I went triple a too early it well everybody can say what's too early but I went too early for myself 
and we had won all Ontario in my hometown. We were having the time of our lives. We're brothers for life. And I, I left earlier than I thought. Um, hence why maybe Colby hasn't gone anywhere, but then they won again without me. And I was doing my own thing, watching my buddies and have to see them at school. And it, it hurt me. So I actually sent Lane a message after we won, telling him he was a part of it, telling him what the guys say about him, that he's been the leader of this team for years and helped them get to where they were without him. Um, but then when I got to see him win all Ontario in baseball, I just went up to him. I'm like, dude, I knew you were a winner, <laughs> you know? Sucks we didn't get to do it together, but yeah. you are a winner, right? He is. He's a special kid, and I'm lucky enough to be uh, uh, had coached him for a couple of years, and they got to know what type of person he is and player he is. And he's just exceptional, athlete. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of neat that you did that. You didn't forget about that. They he obviously played a role somewhere in the line there, right? So right, and it does take everybody to win, and the past year it's all built up to where you're at. Um, but yeah, the other tough part, man, was his brother was at the all Ontario's for Concord and, and he had to be there like seeing us win and I just it killed me because I would have known what he was feeling you know yeah. mm -hmm. that's right it's uh it would be tough to be on the sidelines <laughs> it is tough to be on the sidelines man like it's like when I don't get to help coach it's tough to not be a part of it <laughs> yeah I know uh you guys with the hockey I, I'm not sure how the coach applications work but with baseball and not we don't get as many applications so we're pretty lucky to if you put your name in usually you can you can get it but i know uh the party's gonna go on one day and i won't be invited so i'm just enjoying it now while i can <laughs> yeah um no i uh i'm really appreciative of the kids and parents i've been with the three years i've coached um it didn't go my way a few times around here trying to get coaching gigs but it was it was the parents that wrote uh, reference letters for me. Yeah. It was what the kids said about me around town. Um, and then it was those boys going out and getting shit done last year and winning the championship. And um, and now I, I'm turning down coaching jobs and it feels way better. <laughs> <laughs> that would feel better. When you have it does. Cause when you love doing something, you want to do it, you know? For sure. Yeah. And I got a team back and now I'm going to be on three teams this year. But mine comes first, you know? It's going to be a great season for you. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be right into this shit again, right? <laughs> and that's what we want, right? I, yeah. I thought you were a baseball guy for life. I'm surprised you didn't get into it. Um, I'm surprised you didn't play. You just seem like such a baseball guy. Well, I just grew to love it. Yeah. Yep. And it's coaching it. the kids that did it for you, right? Yeah, I didn't. I played, uh, you know, pickup baseball and pickup hockey as a kid. Never played hockey either. I played football and lacrosse, so. um, Football and lacrosse, eh? Yep. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Do you have any pregame routines or superstitions? Not superstitions, but I'm really big on routines uh, for the players. Yeah. And as, I guess you saw some of the things we do. We obviously outside of the regular warm up stuff, we always do the free throw shooting with the tennis balls for or the wiffle balls for a Gatorade, and it's just to keep the boys relaxed. And I just think uh, all that stuff, the routine, and is an important part of uh, getting them ready for the game and having some fun. I agree. Um, yeah, I guess uh, in my past, I understand about trying to get everybody to laugh and have fun before a game. Because when I got injured in Cardiff <laughs> um, and I couldn't play anymore, and then I became the power play coach guy and um, pregame speaker, um, I would do the pregame speeches for the boys and they were quite carried away. And it was to make them laugh and get ready to play. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I bet you there's some kids listening. <laughs> I'm sure they were good. Oh, they were good. Colorful. <laughs> well, you got me invited back to Cardiff a few times, I think. <laughs> I don't think it was my hockey playing ability. <laughs> but if you're going to have fun, you may as well have fun. <laughs> Are you giving speeches before the three games now? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a routine guy, too. And um, it's interesting how I've changed start the start of the season and, like, where the bar is from how I started last season was from the first practice – um, and first game, I went in, wrote the lineup on the board, wrote what time the meeting's at, and then I just left. And the first time, they weren't ready for the meeting. And I'm like, okay, guys, so in hockey, when it says there is a meeting at this time, you have to be ready or else you don't get to play. Um, so that's how hockey works. So be ready. If the meeting's at this time, be ready next time. And then uh, it's got into they know that the meeting's 30 minutes before the game. Then they go warm up. 
And then I don't talk to them again until I come in hot with the pregame speech. And the first meeting is about strategy and what we're going to do. And then I come in guns blazing. (laughs) I like that. I like it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm a routine guy. And I also don't think I need to interact with them too much during game day because practice is for getting better. Games are for you guys to go perform. And I don't need to overcoach you on game day. Agreed. Agreed. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we have a lot in common for uh, coaching different sports. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I, I, people pretend I'm not paying attention or I pretend like I'm not paying attention, but I know what's going on out there. <laughs> uh, but that was fun after you guys won or all that everybody stayed the night in the hotel together. Every kid was there. Oh, that's great. I wish I could have stayed. I had to, I, didn't have to, but my dad was waiting. He's in his, almost 90 and he was waiting for me to pick him up, but I would have been, loved to stay and yeah. have a beverage and cheers to everybody. And yeah, it was a great season. I'm happy. They all got to celebrate it that night. It's hard. I, we knew with hockey coming to be hard to get everyone together again. So. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's a busy times. Um, well, you said to me outside the pavilion, Oh, when you win, you just you have to celebrate right now. So <laughs> <laughs> every time I won, I had a party. <laughs> yeah. So so actually when we just won this weekend i got a bit bossy with with the team <laughs> we got the parents group chat and right after we won i said winning is fun who's having the party <laughs> you guys are coming from midland right yeah and then big daddy humper who helped coach with me last year with hockey um stepped up and had a pool party and it was awesome and uh we got the whole team there had a pool party they all had fantastic haircuts i did a belly flop um <laughs> winning was fun <laughs> that's awesome i was wondering where you, you guys are gonna drive home or what are you gonna do there that's oh cool. man yeah no we we got back and had fun <laughs> Oh, man, it was a funny morning the next day, but anywho, <laughs> I for- didn't realize that my work computer, I had gone straight from the tournament to the Humpers, and um, then I didn't drive home because, you know, I was being mature, and um, then when I woke up and realized my work stuff was in my truck still, I had to roll her blade across town to get it <laughs> so I could get to work. <laughs> Whatever it takes, coach. Right? You yeah, just got to get her done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you got any questions for me will i figure out what else to ask you well i would just like to uh say i didn't uh like i didn't really get to i didn't know much about you until probably got to know you more in the last month than i did those uh, earlier encounters and i guess my question is do you see yourself coaching outside of minor hockey down the road (laughs) uh yes uh, I believe there'll be a time and a place in my life um, that I'll have to scratch this itch. Um, and until then, um, I'm going to coach the best I can in minor hockey and whatever I'm into and um, get to know as many people around the hockey world as I can in my shed and do the best job I can with my day job because um, they come first. And then when there is a day um, that I want to do that. I just may know a lot of people in the hockey world. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've thought about it, uh, but I'm raising my family in Concordia right now. Good. Good to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very fortunate with uh, Superheat and working for Norm, the CEO, who lets me come to work with a funny haircut for the boys, lets me leave when I have to coach. Um trust me to get my job done with everything I'm doing and I really appreciate it and then when he says jump I'm like well how high (laughs) you know goes both ways right it does and uh I really appreciate that he lets me do this on my lunch hour and then we can do this and then I'm happier have more energy and then I can work harder right for sure it's the same as like playing a sport right (laughs) yeah he he seems like he knows what he's doing so he does when you treat employees like that that's great all right one more question for you yep three most important qualities for a, a minor sports coach Oh, I would say honesty, integrity, and um, passion. You? I like it. I like it. Yep. What about what, you? What are you going to say? No. I, <laughs> that was tough. I'm, that is tough. I'd have to think about that, too. Um, well, I did write down a couple other things. Um, like, you did just get a message from a player that you just coached. And then he thanked you for the coaching and said, you helped him make AAA, right? Well, he, uh, 
he just wanted to say thanks, Ryan and, and Steve, for giving us a chance, giving him a chance. He can't, he's a player that didn't play here before, and and he said, uh, you know, I learned some things this year, and now I made this All Star team that plays outside of our league a couple tournaments this summer. So it was kind of nice to get a thank you. You know, you played a small part in it. I mean, obviously the kid did what he needed to do. He's got the skills and the attitude and effort, but it's kind of neat that he there was some. Small that he, but if that he thought he thought to write. Yeah. Right. I mean, a lot of kids wouldn't think to write. No. As you said, anytime you hear from a player, it, it kind of can tug at your heartstrings sometimes, and you think, "Oh, maybe I'm making a small difference in a young person's life," and that's what it's about in the big picture. I mean, oh, I had yeah, I had a, the herd had a tough weekend that way. <laughs> um, right after we won, I got a fun selfie from my coach last year, Jared and his wife, that they had watched the stream. Um, their son had watched the stream. Five or six other. Um, families had watched the stream the other coaches had watched the stream um and they were still supporting us the three players that they had been with and me um the next season and i thought wow i would like to take the time on a yeah. sunday to watch us play on a stream and then be writing and messaging congratulations and it's like yeah we are family and we're not just on a team for one year yeah those aren't uh that example, that's not, those are not transactional relationships, right? They're, they're something special. I totally agree. Um, and I think winning does that though. I mean, um, winning can, does change things and um, it, the relationship, the feeling, the taste in your mouth afterwards is just so different than if you didn't do enough, if you didn't give it enough, if you didn't execute well enough, you know? Yeah, it definitely uh, creates a bond, right? It sure does. And it's, you guys have that with baseball around here and I have that with hockey. And isn't it fun when you drive around town and you see, you're like, there's an all Ontario champion. There's one. <laughs> it's definitely the icing on the cake. I mean, huh. I always tell the kids, everyone's going that weekend to win and we can't control the, the outcome, obviously. But uh, if everyone just, you know, you just work your process, do what you're supposed to do. Who knows? Good things happen. And like you said, it sure is fun when it comes out your way. Well, and another kid from the team I got to bring up is uh, Lenny. Um, he was my AP goalie in hockey, oh. um, came to Kingston with us, um, knew beforehand that, you know, if anything happened to our goalie, he's going in and he'll be ready, um, knowing it was the other guy's net for the weekend. And he came and was the best teammate. He celebrated everybody's goals. He was giving guys hugs, running up and down the bench, giving guys hugs and high fives. And he was a part of it. And he was a huge part of us winning and having the security of him being there. And um, he's a great kid. And then when I see him start playing baseball, I'm like, holy crap, man, you're a ball player and you're a goalie. And then to see that final game to win all Ontario, that kid goes out and pitches a complete game. eh? He, he's a special kid. Obviously he's come, like, special parenting, but uh Lenny, as you saw, he's been like that since he was little. Great teammate first. Loves the game. You know, goes to so many practices. Anytime he can go to an extra one with the Bantams or with his Wolba team, he does it. And then, like you say, that final game was special. The thing that stood out for me in that final game was um, – or, yeah, it was that game. When that started getting loud at the end and chirping him a bit, and all he did was smile, look at the bench, and keep dealing. I'm like, well, this is what – this guy is a gamer. Oh, yeah. And he had his confidence. And confidence is huge. So, yeah, it's – it's if you don't feel it, it's not going to happen. So that's so important. And you, I know you do that and you got to build them up and make them feel like they can do anything. So yeah. Well, if big. you don't believe it, it can't happen. We laughed. I don't know who it was. that said, did anyone watch the end of that video? The last play of the game and Lenny's hopping around. He's running towards shortstop. They're running toward first base. Like he's celebrating the play. It's not even over, but it was, it was just funny. But it was great. Uh, man. I, I love seeing people, my people win stuff, you know, what it, it, it was, I had a great time watching the tournaments this year when, um, you know, you see all the boys run out on the diamond and everybody's just hugging. And it's it's just like hockey. There's gloves flying, helmets flying maybe, and um, everything's scattered and the boys are all hugging. And those are the best, best times. Love that. Well, I'll tell you something funny, Wally. And uh, we did it uh, this year as well. Not as much as the year before, but we actually practiced celebrating uh, – a provincial championship at the end of every practice we would say okay coach the kids would say can we practice winning i said you're darn right and so we just have a play okay three or you know two outs winning runs on third we get this out we're all ontario champs 
and they'd practice that or they practice a big hit. And uh, so <laughs> in the one game, we were like, you, you guys know how this ends. You practiced it a million times. So <laughs> That's cool. Um, I, uh, I do a lot of things to get the boys celebrating, but I, I haven't done that, but I usually make them compete at the end of the practice and keep score so that one team knows what losing feels like. And the other team knows what winning feels like. <laughs> and then they can just hate each other for a few minutes till they get off. <laughs> That's what I was worried about in the, uh, those morning uh, activities. Cause sometimes there's obviously some competition involved and it gets pretty heated. They're 12 and 13. They want to win, but it always ended on a, a positive, but the, like you say, the competition and practice is important. Oh yeah. That's especially when you have athletes like you had, and I've, I have this year in hockey and last year is when you're going to get better, it's competing against the best. And I tell them, I'm like, we have the best right here. You get to practice against each other. This is where you're going to get better. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, well, let's see here. Um, the one thing I would say to all the par any parents that might listen is I thought it took everybody to win. I didn't play any part. I was just trying to be the parent I'd want in hockey and just stay out of everybody's way and, uh, sit there and watch. Um, uh, but you had Ryan running the iPad, you or DJ, you had Kim doing the score stuff and the pitch counts and it, all, parents have to get involved for all that to happen. Right. Oh yeah. We, we always sit like Ryan and Kim are a big part of the, uh, the team. And I know Ryan tries to make sure he recognizes them. And I think Braden did last year because, you know, they're kind of part of the coaching staff too. And then the rest of the parents, you're, you're as you know, that role is just being supportive. And I know nothing's perfect. There's always times parents don't always agree with coaches decisions, but at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to do what's best for the kids and the team. And we were pretty lucky this year again, with a good supportive parent group. Yeah, it was a great group. Um, and uh, it's like having that app for the parents that aren't there you could see every pitch come yeah. in you could see who's at bat where is people fielding and it's like uh, my hockey team where someone stepped up and is willing to do the stream that then all of a sudden all those people could watch us win the championship and if that if they're not streaming then it doesn't happen that's right well Lenny's mom and brother weren't able to be there so they watched the whole thing stream too so yeah pretty cool it is cool. And uh, that's, it's awesome when everybody can still see it if they can't make it because people are living busy lives these days. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Technology is good, has its good points. Yes, it does. Um, well, you got anything else before we shut her down? Other th thing I got though is our coach's selfie after you guys won. <laughs> we hadn't really got oh. to know each other and I came up to you guys. I'm like, I got to get a selfie. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> people must think I'm crazy with my selfies, but every time they're fun. <laughs> they are. They're funny. That's why I like looking at the ones you put on Instagram. <laughs> but it's like when I get to the rink and it's been interesting now that I've coached a few different age groups. It's like every time I show up to the rink, I'm running into kids I've coached and it's fun every time. <laughs> That's the best part. Being, I try to tell people that my buddies back home in the city, I said, they said, would you ever come back? I said, there's nothing like going into town, uh, you know, for me being at the diamond or maybe watching some of those guys play uh, hockey in the winter. And one of the kids coming up saying, Hey coach, how are you? Like you can't replace that. So no, I'm you like you, I can't see myself ever leaving here. Um, it's like you go to the grocery store and one of your under nine gals comes up and gives you a hug and, <laughs> or, you know, you go to the rink and Savage tries to fight you. <laughs> you know, that's, um, yeah, it's fun every time, <laughs> but yeah, it brings the coaching thing. Just, I don't know it, uh, seeing them become a team, but then it's not just during the hockey season. It's like the, the kids that I've been with you see them see each other around the rink and they have that relationship where as soon as they see each other, they want to go to each other, you know? Yeah. That's the beauty of sports. If it's done right. Oh yeah. And it can just melt your heart around here, <laughs> but I tell you, love your hat. And I love my hat and uh, pretty neat that Colby won both sports this year. <laughs> I know. Talk about it. What a guy, man. Two in one season. Jeez. I don't, yeah, that's not normal. I don't think. No, it isn't. So hopefully <laughs> you guys have another great run this winter and then who knows for him in the spring with his new team. Well, I think uh, I would say I have everything I need and I have the right kids and the right parents. And uh I plan on doing the best I can to help them become the best hockey players they can be by the end of the year. And it will take everyone. And uh, you know, what was tough for me in that final game when it was zero zero with a minute and a half left and the last five or so minutes, I did have to shorten things up. Cause I mean, I do have a few of like the best players in the league and I had to get them out there and they had to be out there. And I did feel bad because I don't want to have to do that. But when the game's on the line, you have to start doing the coaching thing. And uh 
I did feel bad, but that's not how every game's going to be. That was the, la- the last five minutes of a championship game, right? And I-, I would have rather been up a goal or two and not done it at all. That's right. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. There can be some tough decisions sometimes, you know? Yeah, they're not easy. And I think uh, I-, I think most parents understand that you, you do want the best for-, for their kid as well as the team. Absolutely. And that's like those situations happen, but then it's the next game. Well, you guys are starting because, you know, you didn't get out there then and we're going to play everybody and you're going to be out there at the big moments because it's going to take everybody come the end of the year to win that. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I'm looking forward to the challenge and then I'll, you know, I'll have to come see you uh, coach some ball again next spring. (laughs) Well, I'll definitely be out watching some of the games you're coaching and I'm going to try and get to actually Braden and I talked about trying to get to, at least one of the games of every player on the 15 you as well. So I'll likely see you at the rink. And, Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on here. Get to know you a bit better. I know one thing we share is that we love coaching and, you know, it's really important. Uh, I think when you have volunteers like yourself and all the other folks in town that are giving their time up to, to communities are only good at the volunteers. So appreciate uh, what you're doing. Well, and I was, that's why I had you on was because I appreciated what you did and um, I appreciated the good coaching and I'm not a baseball coach. Um, and I appreciated seeing and watching, knowing he was in good hands. And then to see what you guys did, it was like, well, yes, it's, I watched it all happen all year. <laughs> well, glad you could be a part of it. Well, it, I'm I, glad Colby was a part of it. Well, and it's like, I, I guess I was a part of it because I would say when the team wins, everybody wins. And it's like when our boys won last year, every parent was just as happy as everybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, well keep up the good work what's your nickname uh yeah i don't have one i don't think here no what no. was it let the cat out of the bag no i don't know just coach <laughs> coach t or steve whatever coach t yeah. and this has been another episode of two ales and hockey tales with coach t and wally <laughs>